get to the point, take a step forward. We are going to talk about establishing family values and family traditions. I don't know what are some of the traditions or the values that you learned from your own family that you have treasured, which you have carried over to the current family that you have. Are there certain values that you were raised by and you've been able to carry them to the next generation? Family traditions and family values are very, very important. Without family values and without family traditions, you will find tutakuwa muachamila ni mtumwa, ama you find we are raising a generation that doesn't know the Lord, a generation that doesn't know where they are coming from. This happened in the book of Judges, chapter 1, no, chapter 2, verse 10. The book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 10, it says, And also that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them who knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balim. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, the gods of the people that were around about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. When the Joshua generation was gathered to their fathers, the next generation that came, they did not know the ways of the Lord and they followed other gods. As parents, we fall into that risk of raising a generation that does not know the Lord. A generation that is going to be swept swayed by all any wind of doctrine and they will not get to know the Lord. Friends, I'm very serious in my mission in raising the next generation because I know a time is coming we will not be there. And I ask myself, are we going to live a generation that knows and loves the Lord or are we going to raise a generation that is going to be to follow the other gods because there are gods all over. Let me tell you something about culture. Some of you, maybe you know culture better than I do, but then I want to share with you some of the things which I have picked from my culture that I'm passing to my children. One thing that I know in the Kisi culture, before a young man married, he had to have a house. It's mandatory. You, there's no way as a young man you could marry in your parents' house. You have to have a house. So the time I went telling my mother that there's this young man who wants to marry me or I want to get married to him, whichever is which, the first question my mother asked me, Amejenga. Amejenga nyumba. And I said, who cares? Nyumba ya nini? Si tunenda kuishi ni Nairobi kwa magorofa. Nyumba tunapeleka wapi ushago. My mother said, no, you have to. He has to have a house. I felt like my mother does not know what she's talking about. And that's what the pathfinders were asking me. Why are the parents putting a lot of pressure on us? They are acting like we don't know what we are doing. You know, that's how I felt. I felt Mimi ni mesoma. I have a degree my mom doesn't have. She has been in the village. So what is she telling me about? I did not listen to my mother. So we went ahead. <coughs> we got married. Now, we needed to come Ushago Sasa to the village as a couple. The day we came to the village, that's when it shocked me. My mother-in-law has a big house. I love her house. Lakini ujue, hakuna venye tungelala kwa nyumba ya mother-in-law. So guess what happened to me? Nililala kwa nyumba ya mother-in-law, my husband akaenda kwa grandmother kulala uku. The maternal grandmother, maternal kwenye mamake ya metoka, alienda kalala kule, mini kalala kwa mamake. Because there is no way in the kisi culture tungelala kwa nyumba ya mamake. Hakuna vile ngeweze kana. There is nothing like that. Mwachamila ni mtumu, I'm telling you younger people, there is no way. That's when I started saying my mother knew what she was doing. The moment we landed in Nairobi, I told my husband, I'm not doing this. I cannot go. I said, I'm not doing this. Lazima to jenge nyumba. We didn't have children then. I said, Lazima to jenge nyumba before I go back. The next time I was going back, there was a house. You see, my mother was right. 
So I have told my children, don't look at my house and you think unanza kucheka cheka na msichana, you think you are going to marry her to take away. You have nothing, you have no house. Then they say, kwa nini mami? Akina nani sijui amepewa servant quarter, ameoa. Kambia, our culture does not allow that. We don't do that. We don't do that as a people. So, wale wameacha mila ni sawa, but me, us, we don't do that. So, some of the cultural traditions, you know, cultural traditions that have been passed. Now, talking about us as Christians, as a Christian family, kuna culture, kuna traditions, values fulani, your family is known for, that you are passing to your children, and you are hoping they will pass to the children's children. Some of them maybe you learned from your family, zingine pengine ukulan, but this is a good time for you to decide that these are some of the values I want to pass to my children. Now, when you look at the book of Job, I want us to learn these values kutoka kwa kitabu cha yubu. The book of Job, I think Job is one of them people that we can learn from, one of the patriarchs that we can learn from and we are going to learn about seven values and traditions from the book of Job. Open the book of Job, chapter 1. I will read up to verse 5 and then share with you seven family values and traditions that are useful for us to pass to our children. The Bible says, Job chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 5, it says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, one that feared God and turned away from evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His possessions also were 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 female donkeys and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses everyone on his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were finished that Job sent and sanctified them. He rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. A family value, a family tradition is something you do over and over again. You teach and it's passed from generation to generation. I've said this and I will keep saying it every day. Hakuna kitu unafanya that is just something. You know, every action you're taking every day, it's changing, it's shaping destinies. So ask yourself the daily habits that you're doing. We can see what Job did, the values, the traditions that he was passing. And I'm going to share them, seven of them. The first tradition is family worship. Family worship. The best time for you to introduce family worship is when children are young. Family worship and service to God. Demonstrating, teaching your family that we serve God. Here we have family worship. Either we worship in the morning, we worship in the evening, family worship. When they get hold older, they may make their own choice, it's okay. But once you have passed that family tradition, Time alone with God, quiet time. The pathfinders were asking me, how can I be more organized? My parents are always shouting at me, how can I be more organized so that they don't shout at me? I asked them, what time do you wake up? When you wake up, what do you do? Do you spend time alone with God? Do you make your bed? Do you do your chores? And then if you do that and your parents quarrel you, I think they are not okay. But are you organized? They said, no. I said, yeah. So if you are not organized, they can make noise at you. But then what do you do when you wake up? So as a family, family traditions, and here family worship. I know many times we, normally, we say anyway, and it's true, that men are the priests of the home. But did you know that a mother has the strongest influence in the spiritual life of their children? Do you know mama akiamua kuna family worship haitafanyika? Unajua hivyo? That's the truth na kwambia. Mama akiamua kuna family worship, kuna vile keos zitakuwa hapo na haitafanyika. 
but mama akiamua kuna kuwa na family worship it a happen so this is a message to the young men even as you are getting married to somebody who looks who pleases you well something who is please someone who is pleasing to the eyes think about it look at the bigger picture family worship order in the home i have seen men or young men who have married women who are not from the church and they say it doesn't matter wale wa adventist ni boring wana kunywa tu soya all the time you know so they are like no they will go get girls from outside some have still gone ahead and got girls who are pleasing from outside na wengine wamekuja baadaye wameniambia wakija kama kuna holy communion the wife does not see the need for holy communion at washing hands washing feet so unapata wakati wa holy communion she just goes home na watoto hata watoto wakifika pathfinder when they are baptized anawaambia twenda tu nyumbani so the father is there washing feet um holy communion the wife ameenda na watoto wa restaurant wanakula how can you what can you say as a man and obviously as a child ukiuliza mtoto do i take you kukula chipo ama holy communion wacha tu niulize nikupeleke kula chipo ama ukae ukule holy communion sema tu kweli unataka nini chipo ama holy communion chipo wamesema chipo ikiwa dada kwa hapa ati mtoto amebatizwa maybe he age at you want to teach them how wash feet take holy communion then the mother is saying tunaenda chipo tao mtoto ataenda chipo that's how children are so ataenda chipo ama unapata pengine kuna kampori ama kuna vbs sasa hii vbs iko next week unangangana watoto wakuje vbs the wife will be like ah ka tu watch tv of course children will stay to watch tv so family tradition the men are the priest of the home but the women initiate they have a very strong contribution a very strong impact kama kutakuwa order unajua kuna watu ikifika tu siku they are kills instead of watu wako yamekula sapa mapema vyombo zimeoshwa watu wako settled you just find that is when for some reason it's chaotic you want to do family worship chaos what when i'm cast we chaos there is no structure there is no order so family worship job had a culture of praying for his children and he would say maybe one of my children has sinned against god and he would sacrifice and he would pray for them so as much as you you are having family worship pia kama mzazi have the culture ya kuombea watoto wako sometimes it's even good for your children to hear you praying for them My mother used to wake up at 3 a.m. She was not a Christian most of the time. But she used to wake up at 3 a.m. Nana msikia kiomba. And one thing she used to pray for me. She would say, you know God, the way you the way Rose is so generous, she's always giving. Bless her, give her more. I she doesn't know up to now that I used to hear her praying for me. She prays for every child. Na anasema specifically ile kitu ameona kwa huyu mtoto. Zingine of course there are negative things anaambia Mungu akusaidie, but the other ones anasema something positive specific because she knows you. And that taught me to be generous because I said, "Eh, my mother can see this." Na ameomba Mungu anibariki ndio niweze kupea watu, so it became easier for me. So when your child can find you praying, you're even praying for them by name. You are even mentioning ile challenge ako nayo na unaambia Mungu that is the highest form of love for your child. So family worship. The second family tradition is love and support for each other. When you see Job's children, they used to go the Bible says and his sons went and feasted in their houses everyone on his day and they sent and they called for their three sisters. So the sons feasted they called for their three sisters and their three sisters came and they worshiped together and they celebrated actually together many families people are fighting unapata watu wanapigana wao kwa wao people are succeeding wengine wako na wivu and yet it is a pleasure it's a blessing when your family member your brother your sister is doing well many people they are just fighting wanapigana you know somebody told me that their mother got sick um their mother they, they were four in their family their mother got their mother got very sick and she died so when their mother died they were staying with the auntie walikuwa na kana auntie yao dada ya mamake now when their mother died she died like um 
maybe maybe let's say a month like may the mother died so watoto hapo walikuwa wachanga wako shule wako boarding school teenagers hivi so mama akakufa watoto wakazika mama wakaenda shule kama may wamezika mama wameenda shule wakikuja august wanapata ule dada ya mama mama yao auntie ashaingia bedroom ya baba so they are confused because huyu auntie alikuja na al, alilelewa na wao you see they raised the auntie came the mom got married na sister so she has grown up like their sister then they are confused because mama amefariki hivi 2 3 months wameenda shule wakirudi the auntie yako kwa kitanda ya mamake everything completely kwa kitanda ya mamake kila kitu slippers za mamake ile towel mamake alikuwa anatumia everything anatumia the aunt in short if you are not getting the father married the mother's sister na watoto wakaanza kuuliza wakasema ah the auntie is 20s the father is 50s see what is happening baba aliwatandika sasa wakasema this is your mother call her your mother it was very hard that issue caused family problems to the third and fourth generation because again culture in our culture we don't do that maybe some cultures can do that but in our culture we don't do that that um, as a man marries the sister mwenyamelea it doesn't work like that anyway so teaching your children to love to support one another let them know that you may not always agree you may not like your sister you may not like your brother all the time but at the end of the day bottom line this is your sister this is your brother unfortunately wazazi wengine wanagonganisha watoto wao Unapata mzazi you are talking about your child to another child. Unawagonganisha children against children. So they are like in a competition. It's okay. I know saa zingine mtoto anaweza kosa, lakini kwa nini uambie sister yake ama ndugu yake about that? So you sort it with the child ama you and the other parent usiingize watoto because unawagongesha. Some parents wana favor watoto they have favorism na hata wanaonyesha very openly na inaenda mpaka wakati watoto wameolewa wajukuu wana favor wajukuu wa one of the ch- children as opposed to the other sadly wazazi wengine wana favor ule mtoto mwenye anajiweza the one who has the money is the one that is favored wengine wanaonekana kama si kitu and at the end of the day na affect watoto wajukuu vitukuu third and fourth generation some of you maybe you are not talking with your cousins na ujui what they did to you but it's because wali muliambiwa hawa tuongele shani hawa wanaringa hawa ni wale wadosi wanaishi town sisi ni wa ushago and they never did anything wrong to you job's children they used to invite and they celebrate and they feast together family values family traditions family supporting one another the world is so harsh out there you need your family to support you when you are struggling because challenges will come for sure but his family the people that you go to even if your own family is not like that unaweza amua ya kwamba kwa watoto wako you unataka wakuwe na uhusiano mwema you want them to know you will fight you may disagree but at the end of the day you are fighting from the same team you are fighting a common enemy you are not fighting each other you are fighting as friends the fa- the third family tradition and value is work ethic work ethic kupenda kazi kufanya kazi the bible describes what job had and the bible says from verse 2 they were born unto him seven sons and three daughters his possessions were 7000 sheep 3000 camels 500 yoke of oxen 500 female donkeys and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all men of the east job was a faithful man and he was blessed with riches and he was the greatest of the men of the east nataka nikuulize Work ethic gani umefunza watoto wako? Which work ethic have you taught your children? Have you taught them kama uko shule you attend all the classes? Have you taught them kama uko kazi kama ni shamba unalima ni biashara whatever you are doing you do your best you are honest you are a person of integrity. What have you taught your children? I was telling my son the other day that in Kiwa University 
I did not miss a single class. For the entire five years, I don't remember missing a single class. Come rain, come sunshine, I did not miss a single class. And I always sat at the front. My seat was here, the lecturer was here. Because I wanted to take in every word the lecturer is teaching. I did not miss any. So I taught them, nikawambia wakiwa wachanga, ukienda kanisa, unakambele. That way you don't get distracted. Because ukika nyuma, unangalia unawana vichwa za watu, ule mwenye natani hivi unamuona. But when you are seated in front, the only person you see is the lecturer. There was a boy here in the morning who, was, who attends the school where my children were. He attends Nairobi school. Whose son is that? Niliambia my son, I think he was here, ameva miwani, ni light skinned. So that boy, nilimuliza, he said he knows my son. Kama ngekua hapa, ngemambia, confirm. My sons always sat here at the front. Hata kwa church, they sit here. If they came here right now, utaona mmoja ataka hapa, mungina ataleta kiti. Because they know they always sit at the front. So that you can suck in every word. And you don't miss a single class. Nikuwa nauliza my son the other day, akienda university, someday akotuna class moja, hapo katikati. Na university ni mbali. So na muuliza, ah, unaenda hata leo kuna class moja. Na sema, I don't know how it, what it means to miss a class. Me, I don't know that. So whether it's one class or whatever, mimi, I don't know about missing a class. Because nikuwa na wambia from earlier on that, you attend all classes. Come rain, come sunshine. Unless you're very sick. But you have to attend all the classes. So what is the work ethic that you have taught your children? Binadamu wengi watu wengi, they have a poor work ethic. And many of these things, they learned from home. Unapata mtu kimpea kazi, ni kuaribu, ni kukat corners, ni kudanganya, anataka kumaximize profit, because ya anajua, anateka advantage, aki kuangalia, anaona kama huu kona pesa, they want to take advantage of you. I was telling my brother, kintaftia mafundi, na wanakuja, na wanateka advantage, wananibia, nilimuambia, listen, Anybody who has worked hard for their money si mjinga. So ukiniona niko na pesa na niko na kazi fulani nataka fundi anifanyie usiniangalie uone mimi ni mjinga. Unaweza niibia lakini utanibia siku mbili na nibeba malenge. Utaona na malenge si mbaya anyway. But said usinibebe malenge. Utaniibia lakini one day utaniibia siku mbili because kama ni look at job. He had all these things. You think he was a fool? Akwa mjinga. Because you kiwa na hizi 3,000 oxen. Na uchunge. Na uzie sabu. And you make sure wametoka malishoni na wakosa. Kwa niwe ni mjinga. Wezi kwa mjinga. So you have to have a work ethic. There are people. There are families. Hawana millionaire mindset. So they keep on saying. Sisi maskini. Mtabaki maskini forever. Because you don't have millionaire mindset. Unapata something little. You squander. There was a relative of ours somewhere. Alikuwa anafanya kazi ya daily, kazi unafanya unapata pesa, photography. So siku moja, it was before easy simu za Android. So ilikuwa ni photographers those days. Eh? So ukikuwa na wedding, ukikuwa na funeral, this relative alikuwa anapiga picha, anatengeza pesa. You see those uh, functions. So this relative, akienda kama ni wedding, kama ni funeral, was a very good photographer. Saizi sasa hiyo biashara imeenda chini kwa of watu kwa na smartphone. So this person akitengeneza pesa wakati anaenda kwake and I'm not exaggerating na kuambia vile alikuwa anafanya. Ananunua samaki, ananunua kuku, ananunua nyama. I'm telling you same day, si exaggerate, ananunua samaki, kuku, ananunua nyama. Alafu anapita ananunua mandazi, ananunua chapati. Ananunua pengine unga na wanaenda wanapika ugali na wanapika mchele. So ni mtu amepata lamp sum hivi hiyo I'm telling you. Na kuambia mimi nilijionea na macho yangu. So wanaketi hapo na wanaishi kwa nyumba ya mabati because walikuwa wanakaa kwa slum. Slum kind of. Sitaki kusema which estate you may know. Wanaketi hapo wanaweka nyama, samaki, kuku. Ameka hata chips actually alikuwa ananunua chips mwi tu. I'm telling you chips hizo za karai hivi analeta so kuna chips pale mandazi wamefungua chapati mkate wanapika ugali mchele ziko hapo kwa meza one day this man hakuwa na bank account 
na kuambia hakuwa na bank account na hakuwa na mpesa account that day hizo pesa amepata wanazikula alafu for a few days hana rent hana pesa wakati mtoto alimaliza class 8 hakuwa na pesa ya kumpeleka high school akaomba na alipokuwa the siblings wakati hawako anampea akasema muna ringa nyinyi matajiri sisi maskini muna tudharau hamtaki mtoto wangu asome but all that man he used to eat like that na kuambia let me ask you huyo mtu kuna siku hata moja atabarikiwa na pesa zaidi ya hizo there is no day that person can never be rich because he cannot handle the little anatengeneza a one day photography that person maisha yake imeenda hivyo hivyo you know where that life is going alafu imagine wale watoto wamelelewa kwa hiyo boma wakiona that kind of thing nauliza nunua chapati na mandazi why kuku na samaki why na nyama why do you need all those things ukiona hiyo mindset it's a millionaire mindset the mindset somebody has do you know that let me tell you many people work where they are because of their mindset hata ukisikia mtu anashinda akisema sisi ni maskini siku moja tutaonekaniwa na kwambia hakuna kuonekaniwa unaonekaniwa and i'm not cursing you but i'm just saying simply what's your mindset is it that you're getting something una squander saa zingine you die because hiyo kazi you already you're not doing it well but some people unaona hiyo kazi vile anafanya yani anafanya hiyo kazi na passion anangarisha anafanya so well the next time you don't get them there unapata alisha toka ameenda kuingine when i did my driving i did my driving test about 20 what 20 years ago when i was expecting my first born hapo kwa driving school walimu wa driving school walikuwa na tabia mbaya sana they had very bad tabia anakupeleka mahali anakuweka pale kwa mlima na kuambia usipochota sikutoi hapa na uko kwa mlima na anakuambia you know hakuna vile utasongesha hii gari na ni late amekuchukua tu umechelewa they had very bad tabia so one of the teachers akanikampata alikuwa tofauti sana he was very different i said you're very different akaniambia you know there's something that happened kuna mwalimu mwingine hapa my colleague alikuwa hapa he was very good huyo muhindi alikuwa amewajiri hakuwa anawalipa vizuri very poorly but this particular person teacher was very good so one time he was assigned to drive a certain lady akam drive vizuri ako responsible amuitishi pesa ashikashiki that lady a lot of them were touching touching women him he was not touching he was doing he did a very good job the lady akamuliza what's your name can you give me your number kamwambia you know my husband and i we own a school so we have been looking for a driver i want to employ you to be my dri- to be our driver kwa school bus alimchukua mshahara akamlipa times 4 he went to the school hiyo shule ikaendelea waka grow the lady and the husband waka grow waka expand waka kuwa na fleet ya magari akamweka akakuwa transport manager wa hizo shule na hizo mabas to manage the fleet to manage the other drivers just that he was a driver he was being paid poorly some people just because hiyo kazi unapewa unalipo ulipi vizuri maybe when ni house help mahali unafanya madharau unatesa watoto wa mwenyewe unasema huyo mama ananifanya hivi hata mimi natesa watoto wake you will never be anything better you will just remain there but ile attitude you konayo somebody may be watching not even somebody the god who sees in secret he rewards you publicly so what is the work ethic What are your children seeing you doing? Are they seeing you na rega rega tu hivi unaiba ka time ya your employer you are not being reliable or are they seeing you committed in your service to God in the work that you are doing? Are you demanding your children to demonstrate like mtu akifanya kazi they need to talk they need to come and you know tell you what they have done. Do you hold them to account? Ama unaacha tu anything goes that was the work ethic the other one number four is it's related to that and it's integrity it's honesty can they be trusted are you a person of integrity i was talking to the choir yesterday and i was asking ukija hapa unaimba unasema umeona mkono wa bwana umeona kweli kwa maisha yako am you just singing to people i'm not talking about perfection because i know we are human beings but are you a person of integrity can people take your word to the bank 
like kila kitu umesema you've said this you mean it ama ni wa kuongea hivi watu wanasema hiyo ni wa kuongea tu you know you talk 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 but do nothing commit commit yourself but you do nothing over time unapata watu wanakujua wanajua huyo ni wa kuongea tu so they just dismiss but when people trust you they know that you can be trusted when you can be trusted with little things you can be trusted with great things you know kuna cases zenye nimesikia he watu wanakula pesa ya kanisa i can't even imagine that such a thing can happen live alone live alone many adventists don't return their tithe live alone that many adventists about i don't know about your church but in many churches 20% of church members ndio wanarudisha their tithe we are not even talking about faithful tithe because we don't know to you and god who knows faithful so unapata kama nyinyi i think mko around 500 members out of 500 unapata ni kama 80 or less 400 whatever 20% whatever that is ndio wanatoa maybe 8 they wanatoa tithe that is on average average statistics are adventist let me tell you something unatafuta kazi you are looking for a job unatafuta biashara we are praying every day mungu atupatie clients alafu we mwenyewe ile pesa una earn you don't return tithe are you serious there is a friend of mine who is an evangelist when you go to him for prayers to get a promotion to get a job or to get um, um for your business to get a breakthrough the first question anakuuliza kabla ya kuomba anakuuliza do you tithe yes or no do you tithe yes or no if you say no anakuambia please go start tithing then you come we pray because anasema maybe we are praying wrongly first of all mimi this is what i tell deacons and deaconesses You are a deacon you are a deaconess you don't return tithe you don't return offering please resign i'm telling you resign because there are certain things you do unajiletea curses kwa nyumba yako you are not living a life of integrity resign you cannot be carrying a basket una collect tithe na offering what are you saying you don't believe in what you're doing so why are you a deacon or deaconess You can design you just say for my personal reasons I'm no longer able to serve go and wrestle with God and live a life of integrity because you cannot be living a life yenye what you're doing openly inside you're doing something different and then una struggle unasema watoto siju wanafanya hivi mtoto wangu shule anaambiwa ako tofauti nyumbani ako of course umepanda mbegu so why are you complaining you've planted the seed of acting differently hapa the next time you are acting differently just be honest not you it's good just be honest you be yourself you are like eh me kitu ya tithe na offering me i don't believe in it you know tunaweza sema story mingi tunaweza sema oh pesa itoshi of course pesa itoshi na iwezi kukutosha because you don't return tithe ikutoshe aje so you just say oh pesa itoshi i don't know stories nataka tu ningoja kidogo nikipata kazi nikipata promotion utapata you will not get a promotion because the little that you have you cannot be trusted with it so ana utaniambia oh my wife my husband my friend you were called alone mungu alikuita peke yako don't tell me your husband your wife god called you alone single god called you single So don't start bringing another person here. So that is just an excuse, you know? So a person integrity. How are we raising our children? Unajua kuna watoto unapata nyumbani mtoto wako anaimba kwaya, pathfinder whatever ambassadors lakini hapo university utaona maajabu. You see things. They show you things. Paka unaangalia unashangaa. Let me tell you in another church there was an elder. It's a true story. This elder was very faithful he was a vegetarian so elder akaenda kwa another lady a widow at night so unajua kuna wale wako kama Nicodemus wale wanaenda usiku so elder akaenda kwa this widow usiku by the way in Nairobi widows wananiambia the people who disturb them they are pastors and widows and and, and elders lakini of course sio wa church si unajua wale wengine elders na pastors wamesumbua widows paka widows wametoka church in Nairobi Sam. So this lady the elder kaenda kwake. So the lady yeye alikuwa tu kawaida anakula nyama na kula any kind of meat. So the lady ameleta pork. Ameleta pork. Kusav elder pork. Elder akasema, "He, una mimi sikuli pork." 
I don't eat pork. Pork is unclean. Do you have to go to Leviticus? And the Lord said, and clean, and clean foods, and clean foods. Elder menda kwa widow siku. What did God say about immorality? Si heri hata ukule, ukule pork. Heri hata ukule, 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 what do we say? Crocodile. Instead of going to eat some, a widow. Si ukule. Ok, nimeongea matusi. Lakini. But you get the point. You get what I'm saying. Like, does that even make sense? Sasa ukuli poku na nifungudia Leviticus. What does the Bible say about immorality? What does the Bible say? Hapo sasa umeruka iyo. That is lack of integrity. You see, lack of integrity. So are you a person of your word critically important? And you know the character that our children are seeing as living, that is the character that they are adopting. Okay? Now, the other family value that we need to pass is service to humanity. Service to humanity and service to the community. In the story of Job, you, you can go and read the entire book of Job. There's a place where Job says, I never saw an orphan and a widow and I did not provide for them. Job dared God. Is there a widow I ever saw? He dared God. Because Job believed in serving the community. Let me tell you something. Imagine I had yesterday the elder Laboring, I can explain, at his a thousand shillings, she four fifteen year t shirt, nili choker. Aki musinita ten and nianza kuskevo, mimi nili choker. A thousand bob. What can you buy with a thousand bob? And then when I explain, yani you need the elder unampeleka to task, elder anze kuku explain ya, a thousand bob una, a thousand, inaenda wapi, 450 ya t-shirt, sijui whatever ni ya nini, miata na shanga, inaenda wapi, na inaenda wapi, na nini, na nini. Na kuna wale wakona more than four children, maybe they have three, four children, you can talk up uneza saidika. You know I'm wondering. Yani, there are people who are able. I know there are those who may struggle to raise that amount. Kwa nini ni siseme, mi ni kuna ototo wa wili. But I know somebody else may have a child they are not able to afford. Ni ongeze ni toa elfu tatu. Ata tutoke hapo inje, not even mtoto wa mushiriki. I've seen children loitering around. Pick those children. Bring them here for VBS. You know that is very powerful ministry. Mimi wacha ni wambie. We are wasting time kuenda madukani, kuenda masoko. Wachana na watu wauze vitu zao, tunawapigia makelele bure. Who told you they want noise? They want to make money. Sasa watoto, they are loitering all over there. We cannot even give money to buy food, snacks. You know, chakula is very important for kids. Mandazi chai. Then bring those children here. Teach them. Do you know that you are planting a seed for eternity? Do you know if somebody did not give... To me, I would not be here today. Niliwambia me, I was not raised in an Adventist home. Me, I was raised in alcohol. The earliest food maybe I, I took in my mother's stomach ni pombe. Nikiwa mtoto, unapewa pombe, ndiyo ulale 24 hours. So that unaezalewa ulale, mama ende soko, ende shamba, hakuje, amechoka. So you sleep 24 hours, umekunywa pombe. As a young child, maybe two years. Ukijaribu kwa muka, unasikia unajaribu kwa muka, lakini umeisha nguvu. Because ujakula, you are low on glucose na umekunywa pombe, unajaribu kwa muka. Unajaribu kwa muka. I wonder why we didn't die. Unajaribu kwa muka. Umelala ziju hata 36 hours. Ju umepetu wa changa and you are a small child. I think there are children like that. Why not go bring those children here? Teach them because those lessons will be in their mind forever. But like Ukapo, some people take advantage of them. They, they lure them, pedophiles, when our abuse. Teach them even one word, just how to work hard in life, how to be focused. Teach them about the love of God. He ni mission field kubwa. Missy, you can't waste time at it. Tunaenda Eldoret choir. What are you going to do in Eldoret when you have not even swept your yard? You know, just bring those children, bring the children here and teach them the word of God. Where are we taking our resources? Alafu unajua tunaiza sema sisi watoto wetu wakosawa. But you know those children when they are there, as long as they are there and they are not being guided, you cannot say that we are okay when those children are not okay. Let me tell you, some churches have put us to shame. 
And that's why I'm telling you as an Adventist, me, I will never stand in Yenze Kusema, we have the truth. We may have the truth, but can we live the truth? There is a church in Nairobi. I've been a speaker in that church one time. It's called Christ is the Answer Ministry, Sitam, Nairobi Pentecostal Church previously. Don't know whether they have Kisi Pentecostal Church. You know what that church they do? During holidays, they have what we call DVBS. By, yeah, Vocational Bible School. Now, VBS, what they do, they, the members have raised money. When a panga VBS, they buy all the materials, they buy all the food, they hire buses. Wakona buses. They go to the estate, they collect the children. If they do that even in Kisi. My son almost went. Kwayo village yetu wamekuja to the village. Sasa utam blame. They pick the children, all the children. They take them to the church. And their churches are beautiful. This mabati, it's a shame. Sasa nani atakuja hii mabati. Their churches are beautiful. Don't take it personal, by the way. Mi ntawambia niende zao. Hii mabati wacha. Tu inaniuma, ntawongea badai. Wacha. Staki kuongea mabati saikos intaharibu. Anyway. You know, my brother brought me here. He's not an Adventist. Nalikuwa na nicheka. He brought me, he drove me, he was laughing at me. And I said, my owner, Sasa Mamba, is DS, and your man and talk. It's a shame. You think I'm happy, I'm really ashamed. So, your church wanna collect watoto, wanna wafunza. And then you will say they have money. Of course they have money because they give. We can't have because we don't give. And they feed them, they teach them, they return them home. Let me ask you a question. Mtoto akiwa hapo, atakuja SD, ataenda sitam. Nauliza tu. Sasa unaniambia prophecy itanimekia sense when you have not demonstrated how that prophecy has changed you. Mtoto watoto wanachukuliwa wana they are just picked and they are dropped. He are just being told raise some amount of money. Alafu nikiangalia hata zile nguo mmevaa. There are more than that a thousand bob. The clothes you are wearing and you have so many zingine hata ujavaa for many days. Please Adventist, we need to rethink the way we do mission. We need to rethink we are wasting our time talking about things that people cannot relate with, you know, and especially leaving young children. For me, that's where my heart is bleeding. Tunaacha watoto, tunaenda kujaribu ku, to, to talk to older people who maybe if they were to be converted, they could be converted by now. Now watoto unajua, those are children, they really want to hear, they want to absorb. So for me, I was telling you something. People from Nairobi Central SDA Church gave their time they gave their money. My school was very far in Limuru. Now they gave, they used to, people used to drive their cars all the way from Nairobi when I could tell Limuru girls. I was a hungry, poor girl. But I, I could look at somebody, they could talk to me. And I could just say, you know, even me, I want to drive a car like this one day. They could come to church on Sabbath, to na, wana, wana ubiri, to namaliza, wana fungua magariza, wana toa meko. There are ladies have cooked, wana leta chakula, tunaketi pale, wana womu your food, tunakula, tunaongea, tunafanya Bible study, wana rudi. That's how I, I got, became an Adventist, I got baptized because of that. Because somebody gave their time, somebody gave their money, and you will keep saying it's expensive. Please, that word of saying it's expensive, that we don't have money, you will never have. Just say, how can I raise the money? What are some of the ways? Because there are countless ways. Just say, how can we raise the money? Because where your heart is, the money is going to follow. Can we rethink the way we do community service? To see Fikiri like the red, the, 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 in it or the red Sea. You just want, you just want, you want, you want, you want. For me, I and myself, you are not thinking about stretching, extending your hand to be a blessing to just one more person. You are not even being asked to bless so many people. Unambi watum to moja, just one person, and you will make a difference. Let me go to the next one. The sixth one is stewardship towards the environment and towards resources, family values, family traditions. Stewardship. How are you taking care of the thing that you have? Are you wasting just because? Are you wasting and teaching your children to waste just because you are not the one that is spending? Um, you are the, not the one that is producing it. Are you taking care of the environment? Mimi, I don't know ni watu wagani wanarusha takataka kule. Let me tell you, as you drive in, ni mimi peke yangu nimeona. As you drive in, kuna takataka pale nje. 
Sasa I'm wondering, okay, there are people, maybe those are not Adventists, wenye wana mwaga takataka pale. But let me ask you, tukiamua sisi kama my youth, we want to clean the environment. One day to end the apple to say, we will clean our environment so that you takataka to toy na tufunze watu how to take care of the environment. Haven't we done something? You know, sometimes tunafikiria juya big things we can do out there in mission field. Then you just leave the mission field over here because we have been created to be stewards of the environment. How are you taking care of the environment? How are you taking care of God's resources? Because there's much more much, much more, but we are wasting, we are not making good of resources. And you see children observe, they watch. Some people unapata in their family, wanapika chakula. Sasa, why are you cooking ugali na mchele na chapati? Why? See, they are all starch. Unapika hizo tatu kwa nini? Si one day kama leo umepika mchele, kesho ugali, usiku chapu, siku githeri, moja moja. Your body does not need all that food. Me, I realized how much food, unnecessary food we used to cook in my family. Wakati tukua unapika, unapika breakfast, unapika lunch, unapika supper. So I said, no, we are only going to cook once or twice. Na niliwambia for 12 years, 10, 12 years, atuja pika supper, atuja konda, atuja kufa. I wish to get konda. Atuja konda, atuja kufa. So we were saying with my children, tukua unasema, yani na iyo pe, iyo, iyo chakula yote, where was it going? Alafu na gas, tunajaza gas kila wakati. But now we are saying, imagine with this, bado tumeshiba, na tukosawa, na tumesave a lot. So we end up wasting. You know, somebody said, in Kisi we eat to finish. Tunakula kumaliza, atukuli kushiba. Mtu anakuuliza, umemaliza, si ati umeshiba. Kushiba hata atujuu kushiba ni aje. Tunajua tu unakula, umalize. So you finish whatever, you demolish completely, then the following day you eat. Unaanza upia sasa. Are you teaching your children that he, whatever is here, unakula, you eat. When it remains, you keep. You don't have to eat. You know, let me tell you something that ni may notice in many homes. Eh? Unapata watu wamepika sapa. Maybe wakona managu. Wakona kuku pengine ama wale wanakula nyama. Wakona beef ama wakona nini, goat, whatever. Na fi... No, hata usiende kwa fish. Wacha ni kwambie yenye na ni surprise. Eh? Watu wa, wale wanakula beef, wameka beef, wameka uh, mboga, wameka ugali, na wameka mala na ikunywa kama juice. Mala sasa, mala unaikunywa kama juice, ama kama maji. Why? Kwa nini, kama unakula ngombe, pengine kwa nini tena, ama mayai, kwa nini ukunywe mala? Mala si juice. Siyo mala marurano unaikula the following day. Why? Why must you drink mala iteremushe nini? Drink water. But umekula protein ingine tayari. Why are you eating like that? Na najo utaniambia ati that is what, the way I was brought up. Wrong family traditions. You can set new traditions and values that here we preserve resources. Na watu wengine wananiambia, ah, wewe unatuambia hivyo unaleta umaskini. Mimi sijakuwa maskini out of doing those things. Hata nimetajirika instead. Because I've realized whatever I have, I can stretch. Na kula bado na shiba na niko sawa. Tujakuwa malnourished. The seventh one is self-care. In fact, before I even go there, let me tell you something about stewardship. The Bible says towards the end that Job's latter days, he was more blessed than the former days. He was seven times richer than he was in the former days because he could be trusted. What he had gone through, alikuwa ameenda through changamoto. He had gone through a lot. But eventually God knew he could trust him with more. What is more interesting is that Job... The wife acted foolishly. The wife acted foolishly. I know what she had also gone through because she had lost her children. But now, you know, sometimes I've seen people in marriages because your spouse has made the wrong choice. Ata wo unamua ku make the wrong choice because your spouse has made the wrong choice. Let me tell you something. Your spouse is going to act foolishly at least one time. Ata wo we mwenyewe uta act foolishly one time. But the question is, where were my peer? Are you also going to act foolishly? Because Job told the wife, you are speaking like a foolish woman now. 
because she was feeling challenged na akamwambia insult god abuse god and die it doesn't matter mock god whatever and die now there's nothing but he said you're acting foolishly some of us what we have done unachukua your spouse have said this before unamweka ile place only god should be unamweka juu kwa pedestal aki could disappoint na ata could disappoint that one i assure you disappointment is your portion you will be disappointed na si semi at they will cheat on you or they will abuse you know i'm not talking about abuse i'm not talking about unfaithfulness but i'm telling you they will disappoint you in so many ways because they are human beings you're also going to disappoint them human is to error but are they going to disappoint you alafu anze kusema umenifanyia hivi na mimi nitafanya hivi imagine kuna watu i've seen families where maybe the man is unfaithful an example most men are the ones who are unfaithful even women but mostly men it's easier so a man has been unfaithful then the wife says hey at what a man can do a woman can do better he cheated on me with one person i cheat with two imagine oh there are women who do that you don't know they say to tender draw there is a woman whose husband cheated on her she said he has cheated on me in a bar i'm going to cheat in the house and she cheated in the house and the husband discovered na akamwambia sasa ni draw so wacha tuamue sasa what to do okay the husband alikuwa mkisi lakini sio mkisi original cuz kama ni mkisi original maybe kungekuwa na funeral but it was it was ni ule mkisi wa wa minesora <laughs> anyway I, i mean terrible things happen why do you do that and they had teenage children na watoto wakajua na wakaona sasa watoto what happens ni mbegu gani unapanda someone is dis- you know it's better useme ah me the way i'm seeing sioni tukipelekana so please eh wacha nisonge kando kidogo nitafute ushauri na niongee na Mungu wangu ndio nijue vile ya kukuhando but you cannot allow yourself because somebody else ameamua kufanya kitu na wewe useme i can also do this i've seen people wana squander pesa ati because your spouse ameharibu pesa na wewe unaharibu pesa why do you do that una you are spoiling you're destroying your own future the legacy of your children because somebody else ameamua kufanya hivyo na wewe unafanya you don't do that you just say kama ameamua kuji destroy let them destroy themselves but i'm not going to be party to that destruction okay now let me go to the number 7 that i was going to self care self control self discipline self care self control self discipline this ni may seem kama ya mwisho but it's the most important one of the most important tradition that you can pass to your children a lot of our young people even older people they struggle they fail in their destiny because of lack of self discipline samson the rich the strongest man who ever lived he fell on the part of discipline kukula the things he was not supposed to eat going to seek women from lands he was not meant to seek women from because he lacked self control the pathfinders were asking me how can i how how did they ask how can i control myself so that i can manage my youth so that i'm a successful person in the future imagine pathfinders wanajua ya kwamba they don't control themselves they will not be successful they are asking that how can i maintain myself think while you lose kitu kama hiyo many people they are great people they have a great destiny ahead but because they fail on the part of self control they do not succeed they do not go far a lot of great men and women they have fallen on the part of self control because of what they are eating what they are drinking what they are watching they cannot control what they are watching they are, they cannot control the people they are having relationships and sexual relationships with the the body urges the body cravings they overwhelm them then they will go ahead making wrong choices and they have been destroyed at the point of their destiny that is eventually what destroyed samson the strongest man that ever lived a lot of people could be very far but they fail 
One person said, there's one preacher who died, he was called Miles Monroe. He said, the true mark of a strong man, you see it when you give him money. Give a man money, a lot of money, and you will know the character. Pesa ibadilishim too. Money just brings out who the person is. And he said, for many men, you give them money, you give them power, money, they will have women. Itaenda tu ivo, they will have power, because you know, many men are used to being rejected. Sindio? Wana umewengi sana wamezoea rejection. Like, una, you approach a lady and aku reject. Now, not many men can resist mwanamke kumtaka. Even if they are not interested in this girl, but the girl wants you, it's very hard for many men to resist. Especially, msichana anahansa kujionyesha ya kwamba ako in trouble, anakupigia simu, please come, I'm stuck. My house, there is darkness. I need the bulb to be fixed. I'm stuck. Please, please men, be wary. And it awakens the hero complex. They want to go, I'm stuck. You know, my car, I'm stuck. Oh my God. Oh my God, please come and... <laughs> Many men find it so easy, they just want to go and they want to go and rescue. And the, in the process of rescuing, it awakens the hero in them. And they feel needed and they feel wanted. And it goes on and on. It's very hard. And especially when they have some little money, they begin looking attractive. Have you ever seen a man who doesn't look so attractive? Staki kutaja majina. Akipata handi. Umeana, anakamu handi. Unazukusema, ah, where was this person? But something happens. I've seen a person like this in this country. Something happens, they go down. Ay, tena anarudi kuwa, vila alikuwa. Unashanka, ah, kwen. Anaanza kuka different. So, wakati anakamu handi, hapo akona do. And then the ladies are after him. It's so hard for many men to resist. And they think, that the lady wants you. The lady loves you. They care for you. They don't. They have just seen the thing that you have and they are attracted to that which you have. Just know that, yeah? They're just attracted to what you have. And the moment it goes, I mean, you go back, you start saying, I don't know what, what, what. So don't be deceived. I remember one time, I was thinking about it the other day. We had a tenant, my husband and I, we have an apartment, so we had a tenant. This tenant was a single lady. So, Alipongia kwa hiyo nyumba, she used to call my husband. There's nothing wrong about her being a single lady, but I'm going somewhere. So this lady could call my husband. and I'm, We were very young, maybe in our early 30s, maybe. Late 20s, early 30s. And I'm pigia simu, and I'm wambia, light haifanyi, sijui nini nini, whatever. Please come and sort the light, I don't know what. Na kuna keateka. So alikuwa na muambia hivo, and at first, me or my husband, we didn't think about anything. So my husband, I remember one time it, it was with his brother, they went kumsaidia. But it became very frequent. Like she could keep calling at you, sijui maji, sijui bathtub flani, aitoi maji, kuja unisaidia. Ay, nikaona this is suspicious because tumekuwa na tenant mwingine na atukusikia your complaint. Anyway, the caretaker is there. But I did not think much. I was very young. So one time we are drive. my husband was driving and me I'm seated. His phone rang. So when the phone rang, I can pick that phone. I picked the phone. Nikuangalia nikaona, it's the lady who is calling, the tenant. So I picked the phone. Nikamuliza, hello, how can I help you? Akanza kunitusi. Akanza kuniambia, you are just insecure. Ah, So I said, I'm just insecure. I, I introduced myself. I said, hi, I'm so-and-so's uh, husband. I mean, I'm so-and-so's wife. Uh, how can we, how can I help you? Nilimuliza tu, because I knew a tenant, maybe kuna kitu anataka, and uh, what the husband can help, I can help. I said, he's driving. Can I help you? She started insulting me. Oh, that is insult, telling me, you're just insecure. I don't know what. I said, it's secure. I didn't understand. I said, do you know who is talking? I didn't understand. So, misi kuelewa, tukaenda nyumbani. After one or two days, akasema anataka kuhama. She said, I want to move out of the house. So I said, ah, what's happening? I went. Bado sija click. So nimeenda nikamambia, ah, is there a problem? Because umengia tu last month. Na unataka kutoka, kuna shida. Akaanza kuniambia story mingi mingi. I don't know what. Sikuelewa. Anyway, akatoka. I've never 
that thing I thought about it the other day because it need disturb sana kwa nini aliniongelesha hivyo na mimi nilikuwa tu namuuliza what is it how can I help so when I thought about it later on na nimeona how many men wameanguka kwa mtego because of being hero unapata sasa mtu anaanza kukwambia come you know nini I have this problem without realizing you find yourself kwa mtego because a lot of men are used to being rejected so hapa somebody wants me somebody needs me somebody is interested in me unajipata kwa mtego so that's why i tell people talking about infidelity in marriage ask yourself if your partner in the worst case scenario your partner has been unfaithful i'm not saying it's okay to be unfaithful you know my stand but an example is if somebody has been unfaithful ask is it a pattern or is it a situation that is important is it i know you'll say infidelity is infidelity it is of course and sometimes i'm worried what was social media wanachukua tu clip moja wanaacha context wanasema nilikuwa anasema infidelity is okay no that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying ask yourself kama mtu amekuwa unfaithful is it a pattern because kuna ule mtu unajua hiyo ni pattern yet is it a situation because kuna cases where in a kwa situation unaona sasa kama hiyo i'm going to tell my husband this i remember when that lady called na akaenda he took he went with someone he went is like because the lady kept saying there's an issue in the house there's an issue in the house can you come there's an issue she's not saying the issue he went with someone na ilikuwa ni usiku jioni hivi when he went with someone he's finding siju maji aitoki kwa bafu shwali hiyo ndio unaitia mtu na kuna caretaker hapa na kuna nini you know so something like that you can find yourself in a trap so it's good to understand to be wise so the point we are talking is self discipline kujituma kujicommit if you have committed yourself to doing something it may rain whatever may happen but you know you need to say because i committed to doing this i will be in charge it will be raining that's okay but i've committed i'm going to be in charge and i will do it to the very end sometimes you can be given a role in church and it can be very difficult because church members can be very hard ama you think ni raisi to be a leader in church what i need it's the worst thing because church is a hospital for sinners and not all patients respond to treatment so unajua hivyo church is a hospital for sinners and not all patients respond to treatment see that's why kuna mochari hapo next to kiss teaching and referral kuna mochari because some patients will die you see so ukiwa church leader it can be very challenging but you tell yourself I'll keep at it I'll keep at it for this entire period it's the person you are becoming it's the self discipline when i was women ministry leader in my church it was hard for the two years but i pushed through the moment my term ended elder pastor wakajaribu kuniongelesha mbili tena i said no i'm done i've been wounded so deeply vile nilitoka nilitoroka I ran away like I just said mambo ya wamama ni pe break to kwanza I have to recharge because they took me through KICD Kenya Institute of Character Development properly nikapata PhD I got a PhD don't think it's a joke niko na PhD in character development nilipelekwa mbio paka nika nilijua sijui I knew that I don't know but after that it's the person you are becoming So right now wakati naongea na watu wananiambia at what can you do about gossip if people are talking about you let me tell you the things that were said about me you can even die na hizo vitu i wish i was hearing them my children were hearing na watoto wanakuja waniambia mami atukujui hivyo the way these women are talking about you is this our mother we don't know you that way imagine what thought i was getting so emotional mpakanalia na sam i wish wangeniambia nisikie my children are hearing very damaging things which are lies but they are being spread and it was so painful and these are women i've sacrificed i'm not sleeping i've given my money i've visited those who are sick una visit mwanamke mgonjwa unamfanyia shopping after that anaanza kukusengenya kusema uli alikuja tu siku moja akaona niko mgonjwa they never came back again you have done a heavy shopping umemtembelea you've spent your whole sunday i could have spent with my children or making money but mtu wako entitled na complain ati ali ni visit tu mara moja akaenda zake what kind of leader is that can you imagine unaangalia tu yani you look you have no words even to say okay so the discipline to persevere to push through the two years because after that it gave me a discipline no matter what you say about me now i don't care 
You can just say anything that you want. But what does God say about me? What do I say about myself? Whatever you say, I just bounce it back to you. It doesn't matter. Amen? Amen. So those are the seven values of family traditions to pass to our children from the life of Job. Let me see if there's any question, comment. We have a few minutes before we end tonight. Any question or comment? We have a few minutes. Now, Salimi, I'm down. Mimi, Nataka Kuliza, Swali Kusu, I value your Kwanza, family worship. Sisi wa mama wamesema, sisi ndiyo tuna initiate na ni ukweli. Lakini kuna time pia tunapata challenge kwa nyumba when we want to worship in the evening, maybe after supper. Na, waze, I'm sorry waze, I'm not attacking you. Lakini unapata kwamba phone. Simu mtu anakaa kwa simu, amekula, amegia kwa simu. Hata ile time mnataka kuomba mtu wa hata ataki kutoka kwa simu anakaa kwa simu anakaa kwa simu kama kulikuwa na watoto wadogo wanasinzia wamelala so hata ile kuomba unapata kwamba hata moyo umetoka you, you don't feel like hata sasa utaki kuomba unasema maneno mawili you go to sleep then hao watoto wanapoendelea kukua wakiwa wadogo ni sawa unaweza kuwa control you tell them come we pray sasa wakisha kuwa teenagers Utapata mwingine hata anasonga nywele mkiendelea kusoma Biblia. Mwingine kama ni mvulana pia na yeye amerudi kwa ile simu. Sasa unaona kama inakuwa ni challenge sana kwa nyumba kuomba. Sijui tutasaidika aje. Yaani hiyo naona kama inakuwa ni challenge sana kama atuwezi. Sawa asante wacha nijibu hiyo. I think ni changamoto iko common in many families. So hiyo unaenda kando, mnaongea kando. Just say that I've observed wakati wa family worship, nimeona unakuwa kwa simu tafadhali inawezekana during that time put a time. Just say inawezekana 8:30 to 9. So utakuwa umepanga. You have to order your home. You order in such a way that supper watu washakula, viombo zimetolewa by 8:30 just an example because that's my time in my family. 8:30 kila kitu kiko set. So unasema tafadhali mpenzi wangu na kuomba during that time you put the phone aside because it's not a good example hata kwa watoto. Weke simu kando ndio tufanye family worship. Si utakuwa umemwambia hivyo. So next time ukienda ukiona ako na simu unamsignal. Si kuna ile lugha mnaongea unamwambia unasema time for family worship. Munaanza family worship. Ukiona habadiliki usirudie tena. If you tell somebody to do something more than twice you are becoming a nag. Na unajua Biblia inasema it's better to live on the rooftop than a nagging woman or a husband. Husband mimi nimeongeza. But the, a nagging person, si ndio? Tuseme a nagging woman for example because women we talk more. So you say once then you remind the person. Okay? Just twice. Ukiona abadiliki ni sawa. Remember you are also a partner, you are also a parent. Maisha yenye hapo una, una, una the life you are fighting for is the life of the children because you have said a man watch and your husband is not your son you're not the one who gave birth to him he is a child of god he has his parents so the part, the people you are fighting for are the children so ukiona hivyo waendelea ita watoto begin to sing begin to do worship he may join he may not if he doesn't join it is choice but you are praying to god you pray na watoto wakiangalia they will see and they will ask you tukiendelea kufanya family worship naona dadi yako kwa simu namwambia ya yeah, you know even adults are not perfect even as adults we make mistakes so because you also don't want to say it's okay it's not okay but you just say yeah even adults are not perfect we can pray about it but there's nothing much you can do na mtoto anakuambia saa zingine anamwambia Ume, umeangalia hivyo unaweza ongea you can tell that do you want to tell daddy because they can see sio wewe umewaambia otherwise unaendelea na watoto wakiwa young because unapanda mbegu samaki mkunje angali mbichi so the thing is 90% of the character is developed by 7 years 90% of the character by 7 years so work very hard to set the foundation sometimes i've seen even parents ukiona the husband for example anakaa kwa tv na ameweka loud volume na umeongea na aski you go with the children to their room 
you pray with them you do the bible study with them munaomba na unawaacha hapo kwa room because you are fighting for the life of your children don't let at unaka mpaka by the time inafika 9 unakuwa discouraged unakuwa disappointed unakuwa na hasira mm don't do that kazi lazima iendelee take it up na usishinde hapo you are you are, you are Uh, you whatever you are giving your energy to saying sasa mzee afanyi ukikuja kanisa eh hey, hata hawa elders ukiwaona hivi they are not even priests of the whole mzee afanyi 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 none of your business achana nayo shut your mouth pray teach the children so ukishawafunza umeset foundation wamefika teenager wameanza kushuka nywele wakati wa family devotion tell them you know i've not raised you that way you know the way i've raised you we honor god and we do family worship naona umechagua kushuka nywele wakati wa family worship you know i don't support that that is not right we need to honor god for some time as we do family worship concentrate utamwambia hivyo na ataendelea I know the path you have chosen is not good. I did not raise you that way. We will continue. Mimi kuna wangu mmoja na sita mtaja jina alifika mahali akaanza ku worship online. Yeye akasema even after covid haende kanisa anasema mimi nita worship online. Nikamwambia that's also okay. I'm seeing you have that time ako adult already. Nimeona umechagua ku worship online but you know me I've always raised you mukienda church kwenda ku worship but if you have chosen to worship online i love you and we will be praying for you we miss you i really wish that you can join us to church ali worship online for some time for some years siku moja tume prepare nasikia nuliza mama leo unaenda kuhubiri wapi nikasema church fulani nitaenda na wewe utaenda na mimi eh hey, tunaenda pamoja ameoga tunaenda pamoja nikasema ah kumbe umeonekaniwa na na roho mtakatifu akasema huwa ni huwa nimeonekaniwa ni, ni i always have the holy spirit i said oh i didn't know that i said she said yeah nimeonekaniwa ni vile tu one i said oh akaanza kukuja tu you don't fight about that you just say i'm praying for you i didn't raise you that way and i pray that you will come back to the fold because even as you raise children kila mtoto ni tofauti kuna mmoja wangu vile yule mmoja alichagua ku worship online kuna mwingine tulikuwa na family sabbath holy communion tukamaliza holy communion tukaenda nyumbani family sabbath family afternoon tukakula lunch nilikuwa naambia elda tukakula lunch nikasema leo wacha tukae kama familia tufanye nini tuongee si ni family afternoon nikaona amechukua bible yake na notebook amevaa sport shoes anatoka nje nikamuliza unaenda wapi akasema i'm going for a prayer walk I said prayer walk akasema mimi naenda aboretum for my sabbath afternoon i said why he said mama the way you've raised us mimi sijui kukaa nyumbani siku ya sabato so he said you raised us to kill church the whole day so me story mmeanza ya family sabbath ati kukaa afternoon nyumbani mama mimi sijui mimi nitaenda kufanya sabato yangu wapi aboretum kwa maombi na meditation akaenda hivyo those are same children same home have raised the same way kila mtu amechagua na nikaambia you know guys i'm not perfect i've done my best i release you you can do what you want to do but at the end of the day remember there are things i don't support you know it's 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 one thing to to be taught each and every time we get these teachings you are prick to the heart and you say that i'm going to be to do this like parents say we are going to raise the the family out at home and you start but in the way you find you never do it again um i'm just asking what's the power behind persistent and consistency because we 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 get we get that urge um i'm i'm, I'm saying today i'm going to be diligent and i've resolved that i'm going to do this later on you find the psyche is down and then you find yourself not doing it so what's the power behind persistence and consistency thank you in kitu many disturb sana because um in our church we have a lot of like family life weeks to kona camp meeting na tumefunza tumefunza mpaka mimi nasema tumetosheka like we have learned so many things but i don't know whether we apply the things that we have been taught so first of all you don't try too many things at once ukijaribu vitu mingi mara moja as a human being you get overwhelmed just purpose one thing mi wanapenda kama niko na goal i like to set my goals for three months wanapenda ku set i'm going to be consistent in family worship for three months before i introduce another thing because you kianza for example kama umeona hizi values and there are many and you want to start all of them because they are good you will get overwhelmed 
Just say for these three months, Tanza Yi, come on integrity. I will say what I mean and mean what I say for three months. If I can't do it, I just say, you know what? I cannot do it. Like when I came here, I've got a lot of requests. Unapata unambiwa, kuna kanisa fulani, kuna maali fulani. Somebody says, come and visit us. I have many relatives in this town. Na wamekua kiniambia, tumesikia uku maali fulani, come. I've told them, sorry, I can't make it. You know, it could have been easy for me to say, alafu ni kue overstretched, na kimbia pale, I'm not even delivering any impact. I said, I love you, I want to visit you, but this time I came for better living at Tembe. Another time, please invite me. Will people get hurt? Why not go hurt? But you know what? I can't. So it's better you said one thing at a time. Ukisha ifanya for three months, you make it part of you. You know, research shows that 90 days, 90 to 100 days, you do something every day, 90 to 100 days, it becomes part of you. So ukisha succeed you every day, you do it, then you introduce another thing. Another thing I want to say, what is your why? What is your why? Many of us, we don't have a why. Like, what is your why? What do you want? To, why? Why do you want this? If you have a big why you want to do this, you will succeed. Niriwambia Jan, I think I was telling the women, that the women and girls, that I grew up in extreme poverty. I went through a lot of challenges. A lot. Na niliangale your life. Na nilisema, you know what, I'm not going back there. So kuna mahali fulani mimi wezi nipeleka. So nikiwaambia nisipate hii mabati si atinaringa. Mimi nilinyeshewa mvua kwa nyumba. Sitaki kunyeshewa mvua church. Si kwa ubaya like please understand me. Sitaki kunyeshewa mvua kwa church. Mimi flow yetu ilikuwa kama hivi. This is better cuz iko na mawe. Flow ilikuwa matope. So unakanyaga hiyo matope hivyo mvua inaingia ndani na naingia kwa matandiko hata hakuna matandiko anyway. Naingia kwa kwa, kwa rags whatever. Staki kukanyaga hii matope kwa church jamini. Staki, like I don't want you to take me back there. You know, so I have my big why that I cannot go back to that life because it's not the will of God for me to suffer. I have come to learn. There were wrong choices that were made. There were circumstances. Na nimezikata kwa jina la yesu. You see, so ndio nakuambia, <laughs> your kids, <laughs> a big why. I said my child will never be hungry. Mtoto wangu hata wa hitaji kitabu wakose. Haiwezekani. Mtoto wangu hata wa hitaji warm cloth wakose kama vile ndikosa. That's not going to happen. Mtoto wangu hawezi hitaji kwenda trip, educational trip and I can't pay for them. No, that can't be. It ends. It ends with me. You see? So when you have a big why, you do what it takes. It will be hard. But you do what it takes. You are like, no, because I know where I'm coming from. You have a big why. Another thing is this. You believe in the God who has called you. Personally, I believe when I read the Bible, I believe and I own it and I just say that is going to be me. You know, I was telling you about, you can talk about the God of your parents, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of who? Me, I did not have that Adventist heritage a lot of us had, which you can say the God of my grandfather, I don't know that. Wengine pengine kwenu ni hapa nyanchua. So the missionaries came here, me, I don't know. It's on his story, minaskia. But then, you know, so I tell myself, if God has written this Bible and the story I'm reading about Job, Job had 3,000, I don't know what, what, what. Why can't I have those things? Then you read about the lives of people. Unaskia binadam, ordinary people who have walked the earth. And they have achieved these things. Kwani mimi nilikosea wapi? Like me, I'm, I'm not a human being. I'm also a human being and I can achieve. And it keeps on encouraging. I like reading and listening to stories of people who have achieved great things. Unajua nilikuwa nambia pathfinders hapa and youth that you find somebody ameji post, ameka video TikTok. No, I don't know kama ni TikTok, kama ni Instagram, whatever a video, au watu wanajita influencer, anayeka anapika chai ya nakunywa. Amepika samaki na ugali ya nakula. Mtu anajishuta, melala na bibi yake, sijua anafanya nini, anayeka online. Six million views. Na wale, six million views. And most of these social media handles ni young people wako wapo TikTok. Six million views, you're watching somebody sleeping with their wife. You're watching somebody drinking tea. Una watch mtu waki yoga. What is that? Alafu saizi, nitengeneze clip, nikisema effective study habits. Nieke TikTok, three views. <laughs> Na three views ni my husband, and my son, and a friend. Three views.
views. Alafu this generation yenye iko TikTok ni watu wako shule. Wana study. So you would have expected your video na wambia effective study habits because I used them and I got an A plane. And I'm teaching you how as, as a child who was born in an alcoholic family with a diminished brain, how I managed to get an A. Na kufunza and these tips work for free. You are not watching. Unaipita tu. But somebody anapika ugali na samaki anakula. 600 million views. I don't know. What is that now? So you see now, the way I was going is I was saying, look at the kind of things people are watching. So kama mtu anawatch yo kitu, how can they have the persistent to do better, to do better? Because atafika shule class, mwalimu anafunza, the children are lost. Because in their mind, they're just looking at that person who was sleeping with their wife amejieka. Na sahi mwalimu anawafunza about volcanic activity. So boring. Kwa menkuruma. Iyo sasa ni unatuambia. I don't know. Iyo nini unatuambia? Kwa menkuruma. You know they are looking like what? Na wawa wanafikiria juya. Watu wana dance TikTok. Iso dance moves. You see? So that is the thing. Are you every day? Are you feeding yourself? Are you watching? Reading? Studying? Listening to stories of people who have achieved. Because sometimes you get discouraged, you get demotivated. But you need to keep encouraging yourself in what you're seeing. Ama when you see people who are succeeding, unapenda tu kurabish kusema, sisi wale ya tujiwezi, hizo ni ya wale wakona pesa, kwa nini we usikuwe na pesa? Ama hizo ni za wale wanaishi hapa juu kwa magorofa, why don't you also stay there? Because I mean these are people and they are staying there. Can't you also work and keep pushing? You know, you keep on getting better. Yeah, thank you so much for that question. I think it's good because many times we hear these messages, but do they change us? Do they transform us? Finally, let me tell you something before I go. I was in another church one time and it was a, a, a Sabbath for young people. So after that, a young man sent me a message after a long time. Aliniambia, I'm in a university and I was on Sabbath that day when you spoke. I had struggled for so many years with masturbation and pornography. Nilikuwa nime struggle na sexual relationships, masturbation, pornography, mix of many things. Na nilikuwa mi najua, I will never like overcome that. Then you preached to us and you told us certain experiences. I left that church. Na nilikuwa tu mgeni, it wasn't his church, he was just passing. The way you say today I'm going to this church. Kaniambia after I left that church, I have never gone back to pornography, masturbation, or sexual relation. And I've looked for your number because I just wanted to tell you that you came for me and I was not a member of that church. Now, can you please come to my university so that you can talk to other young people? I couldn't make it. I was busy. But that young man, I read the message. Nikamwambia, just because of the message you have shared with me, umeni encourage. Ata mimi umenifanya ni realize that this is a life-saving gospel. So there's power in this word. There's power in this word. And there's power in prayer. So obviously you're praying, read your Bible, pray every day. And focus on, I was telling the pathfinders, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things, think about these things, not about these things that are not of good report. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness, and your love. You have been so good to us. You've been so faithful to us. We cannot thank you enough. We pray that you may help us to reflect, to think about these things, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are of good report. May we think about these things. I pray that you may change us. We may not remain the same again. If there are things that we have struggled with, oh God, some values that we have not embraced as Christians. How I pray this moment that you may give us power to overcome the desires of the flesh, that we may be focused, we may be a people of integrity, we may stand firm, O oh God, that even we may be a witness to the world, and when you come back, you may say unto us, well done, good and faithful servant, enter ye into the joy of the Lord. May you bless us, may you open windows of opportunity for us, that no man can close. May you bless our families. May you bless our neighborhood. Bless our nation. Bless our church, O oh God. Be with us from now, even until the end of this family life week of prayer. Bring more unto the fold, O oh God. And we thank you even for the messages that are being uh, 
that are being broadcasted through the social media. Pray that many people will come to know you. For we pray this, believing and trusting the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Get to the point. Take a step forward.